editing is probably the most important job in journalism. Without editors, you don't have the best journalism you possibly can have. The editing process is as important as air in my book. When we're doing things on the pages, we want to make it the best it possibly can be. And these are the front page. And what is the front page? How important is it? It's the window on the rest of the paper. The editing residency at Temple University, led by Dr. Ed Trades, has been operating for 50 summers. Congratulations. All the interns, whether they start in 1968 or 2017, remember that this is a very intense program and it will change their lives. To be able to work with somebody like Dr. Trays is, is really a spectacular opportunity for young journalists. I mean, he's somebody who is so exacting, so demanding, and at the same time, you know, really compassionate and, and really connects. Gratuitous color has no place in stories. Color for the sake of color. Keeping language short and to the point and not making it too flowery or, or elevating your speech too much. The words speak for themselves, and using the journalese is best avoided because, like me right now, it gets wordy, and it's not, <laughs> and it's not the best way for readers to comprehend the story. It's always been that that great copy editing is really the foundation of credibility. Why, why, why this word, and why not another word? It's not just spell this word or how is this word used in copy. It's a lot of comprehension, not only how it's used, but in what context it's used. He's given us a list of words often misspelled or misused, and it's a good sized packet. It's more in depth than what I've done before. We have to study all of South America, capitals, major cities, major waterways. He says we're gonna have to do it off of blank maps. He also didn't give us any handouts, and we can't print off anything. You may think oh, I know this, and I don't have to double check or triple check it. I could just go through, but that's where mistakes are made. What he's teaching us is to always have doubt. Even if you have a little doubt, then you have to go in and check it. Copy editing is important to journalism because copy editors are the last check on the material before it goes to the consumer, to the reader or viewer. The founders uh, recognized uh, the essential role of a free press in the democracy. It's, it's the one and only industry that's actually called out uh, in the Constitution. They really saw it as a fourth branch of government, as a check and balance on, on power. I was born in a farmhouse. I started being interested in journalism when I started working at the Bangor Daily News, and I was about nine or 10 years old. They'd let you stand next to the machines and ask questions, and boy, I had a lot of questions. Another quality of great editors is a willingness to question. When you think about it, editing is nothing more than asking questions and demanding reasonable answers. Good editors know that in this context, there are no stupid questions. The truth must be pursued. The truth is hard to hear. The truth is rarely simple. The truth isn't so obvious. He definitely loves traditional newspaper journalism. He brought in a copy of, I believe it was the Philadelphia Record from a very long time ago. It's an antique, uh, and it was, it was probably this wide. Gordon Parks. Widely known photographer. He knows so much about newspapers, photography. He really sees the whole package, and that's not something I really got anywhere else. Everyone must understand that there is no substitute for close, careful editing, and everyone must realize that late one night, the young intern in the corner just might save the enterprise. Thanks. The main objective should be to be accurate, to be correct, to get it right. I think we were taught uh, 
that sort of drilled with this principle that you had to have the facts, they had to be accurate, you couldn't make mistakes. The overlay was when editing a reporter's story, you had to verify the facts, challenge the facts. Fact checking, accuracy is key. People are reading and they know something is not true as they're reading it, they're gonna call everything else into question, whether it's a small little fact or a big one. An understanding of the world and having a real grasp on, on history and geography and, and how, what is happening in the world. Because then you bring the larger world to the story. You don't, you're not circumscribed that way. What Trace teaches is a fundamental form of curiosity that can be applied to really any medium of journalism. You have to have a sort of curiosity about the world and a willingness to be thorough in everything that you do. I could be editing something very small, a very short piece on a viral video, and I mean, that's, that's a lot of what we do. And you still have to inject a sense of skepticism. You're always a Marine if you're a Marine. The two-week boot camp was hellish. Dr. Trades, I mean, he is a drill sergeant in terms of like making you study, quizzing us the next day. It was really intense. It was kind of like... We worked like dogs. He worked us, I mean, I, I, and it was longer in those days. It was, it was two weeks long in those days, and it, it, he worked us like dogs. I feel like I still have PTSD from my two weeks at Temple. You dive in, you're doing two weeks of intensive, intensive study. It's real world facts. The hours were incredibly long. We would wake up and have breakfast at something like 7.30 a.m. and then we'd be in class around 8.30 a.m. and we'd do that until 5.30 when we broke for dinner and then after dinner we'd do homework until late at night. There were quizzes and uh, Ed would give us a map of the United States with all the state names blank and we had to fill it in. And we got graded on the results. We got ranked uh, among the people in the class. We had the stack of books we were carrying around. I remember kids on campus who were making fun of us because we were the kids lugging around 15 really large books. There were a lot of books and we had to carry these with us every day between the dorm and the classroom. We had to memorize the AP style book. We had quizzes uh, every day on a different section of the AP style book. And there were daily spelling tests, there were geography tests, there were just trivia sort of items. Oh yeah, now we have a spelling test. And we would go around and everyone had to spell the, the word correctly. And if you didn't, you had to, the whole round would start right over. It was mortifying. I think at one point we, for a test, just had to list all the heads of state for the world, which is not an easy task and something that one might say is impossible to study for in less than 24 hours. I had to know all the state capitals. I mean, it was just an incredible boot camp of knowledge. And so we would have these massive containers of cheese puffs that are probably obscene and going to give us cancer later, but we went through many of those. We went through granola bars, juice, like any sort of junk food to just like get a little bit of a rush to stay up for longer and study. This book, which was a visual dictionary. This is one of my favorite books. Birds, wings, mouse, fruits. Basically, we just had to memorize this and it might turn into a quiz. Different kinds of dinosaurs, equestrian sports. One of the assignments would be a spread from this book to understand how biplanes and triplanes work, for example. GPS, toaster. Or it was either a hybrid car or a motor. Hybrid car. This was it. This is the spread on how a hybrid car works and the quiz. <laughs> Did you see there's actually food smeared on this spread <laughs> from when I was studying? It was, it was intense. It was a lot. <laughs> but it was, I got the sense that I was part of something special, right? I got the sense that I was part of just this amazing group of young journalists who had big dreams and big goals, and this was going to be our way into whatever our future looked like. After these two grueling weeks, we weren't necessarily told what we were doing, 
we got out of the van and we ran up the steps of the Philadelphia Museum of the Art like Rocky. Oh, yeah! We were triumphantly at the top and it's really silly, but there was just something about it that felt so cathartic. And that just drove home how close all of us were in that moment. Entrez is a rock of Gibraltar. He is legendary for the standard he sets. They revere him. They come back years later to thank him and honor him. And it's no wonder. He and his wife were just so kind and so welcoming to everyone. He's uh, one of a kind. He's an iconoclast. We spent two weeks together, which in the span of a lifetime doesn't really seem like much time. Um, but it, it had a uh, effect that was, you know, really everlasting. My internship was here. I, I started the AP and I have worked here for almost 40 years since. I met my wife in New York. Uh, I have children who are now grown. It's all because of the internship. There, everything, everything stemmed from my internship here. I think this internship had almost a bigger, if not you know, impact on my career than the actual going to school for journalism did. And it really changed my life. The two-week boot camp at Temple had a tremendous impact on how I see journalism, how I see language, how I see words. I don't know that I'd be at the New York Times without even just that two weeks. It was quite frankly really invaluable because it ingrained in me the sense of the basics. Like I understand language, I understand what's important, I understand that words matter. It really was confirmation that I was part of this amazing, special industry, that I was part of a public trust, that we had a huge responsibility, every single one of us in that room, to uphold that public trust. Journalism will survive because it has to survive. We must have believable, credible, viable uh, public service journalism for our country to survive. The challenge for these young people will be to help us figure out what the future is. The democracy can't function without an informed electorate, and journalism is what informs the electorate. We need another generation to carry on the, the fight, and this program is a, is a wonderful source for the, the new generation. The excitement of journalism, it's not just a job, it's a calling. <laughs>